Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Joni Builds. Uh, we had a, my buddy called me the other day and he's, um, he's got a lawn care business and uh, he has his walker giving him trouble and I used to see this a lot and Joni felt like this would be a good video to show you guys. Uh, so if you've ever had gas mixing in your oil on your engine, we'll address that today and see if we can figure out what it is. I haven't investigated yet. I had him try a couple things because I was busy a week ago, but uh, he said it's still doing it, so we'll we'll give it a shot. But we have a 20 horsepower Kohler, and your uh, I think it's an MT CHS uh, model Walker, and um, these are good mowers. They're just uh, kind of a headache to work on because everything's it is so compact. So uh, so like I said, this thing had gas and oil. So he changed the oil in it, and right now it doesn't appear to have any gas in the oil right now. But they did say it was stumbling, so we're going to look into that. Well, one of the first things I told him to check was the gas cap. The gas cap would give you trouble in two different ways. It's like putting your thumb on a straw, where you know you'll hold the liquid in, it won't let your fuel out, or if uh, it can't breathe, it'll build pressure in there. That pressure's got to go somewhere, and if you've already got a little bit of a problem with your float all that pressure is going to go back to your carburetor and, and basically just push the fuel through it and then the gas goes in the carburetor and then settles inside the engine. So he did, he's got another one of these walkers and he went ahead and checked the gas cap and I told him to make sure it's got the little rubber grommet on the inside and this one does. So, and I could squeeze it and I could hear the air coming out around the tank, around the gas cap. So we're good there. And then when he said the engine was stumbling a little bit, that let me know that there's probably is a, a carburetor issue. So we're going to go ahead and just pull the top of the carburetor off and check it for uh, garbage. Because really this engine isn't that old. I think we put this engine on a year ago. But let's go ahead and see what we got. We're going to go ahead and remove the air cleaner. Good and clean. So one thing about this guy is he takes care of his equipment. That's a 5 16 so we'll need to remove these three bolts. inside the carburetor. Again, you guys can look at this thing and tell that it's it doesn't have a whole lot of hours on it. Just how clean it is, and for, especially for one that gets used all the time. So now I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get my compressed air, and I just want to blow this off and blow anything that's loose out of the way, so it doesn't end up inside the engine, inside the carburetor. So instead of removing the carburetor, I'm just going to field dress it, <laughs> which is just basically remove the, the top off right now. It's, a lot of times there's really no reason to completely remove the carburetor unless it's been sitting a long time. Then if you need to kind of set it, uh, vat it in chemical where it can break down oil fuel. But with this one, I don't think that's going to be the case. Is try to work this gasket up easy so it doesn't tear it. All right, I can see the problem. 
quickly go ahead and get this fuel line off so I can rotate this off the choke. I'm just removing the fuel line here. That way I can take this and get this choke linkage off. Because you don't want to break this thing, it's plastic. So we'll clean this in a second, but I just want to show you guys what I see right now. Let's see, see if you can get in there, Joni. I can see this kind of rust stuff in there. Mm -hmm. That's just crap from fuel tank or something, but it's water. It's water and some garbage all at the same time. So we're in the south and it rains every day down here. And so if you have your fuel tank sitting on a trailer or something like that, it's easy to get fuel and easy to get water in your fuel. Here's a little something. If you've got kids around or once they're grown, go steal this from your wife. This actually works really good. So I couldn't find the baster, but I had a few of these. What I want to do is get that out so I can really see what it is. Right, just to show you guys what was in there. And this is another way to tell if it's water. Water will, will bead on top of gas. So that right there is water. And then all that extra garbage. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take compressed air and I'm just gonna blow all this out really good. But Joni's gonna step back because this, this sends gas everywhere and she doesn't want it all over. Okay, so now that I've got all that blown out, you can see down in there it's good and dry. But you can actually see the water will actually just start corroding that aluminum. So you can tell where the water's been sitting on both sides. So what I like to do is just take a, a screwdriver and make sure there's nothing else just kind of holding on because sometimes it'll get a little crust down on the bottom. Just make sure it's all broke up. It's actually pretty clean. I'm just kind of scraping a little bit and I'll blow it out one more time. All right, so now I'm just going to blow that out and that'll be ready. All right, so this thing did, was getting... Uh, gas in the oil so I know the carburetor was was leaking by so what I want to do now is uh, I'm sure there's gonna be trash under this needle and you can see all that that garbage and that uh, look like sand that was in the bottom of the bowl well that has to come from the fuel tank past you know the fuel filter or wherever so we want to make sure all that garbage is cleaned out here and then we'll address the fuel tank and fuel line and filter here in a minute. So, yeah, Johnny was asking about it getting gas in the oil. Yes, it's, you'll, you'll get it and you'll get a bunch of black smoke and you'll, you'll ruin your engine. If you, it'll run with it in there, but it won't, it won't run good. So what I did is I just pulled the one bolt out and just picked the bowl, picked pick the float up. This is your needle. Just sort of slip it off and, um, Kind of looking at it against his paper. I don't see any trash on the end of it. So now I'm gonna get we'll get some air and we'll blow out in here. But I want to blow it against this paper and see if I see anything come out. All right. So again, I'm just gonna blow in here. I'm, this is the idle circuit. Let me pull this out before it it falls. And we lose it. But anyways, we'll put that back in the carburetor body first before we put this thing back together. All right, so this is nice and easy. Crashes through it. But that's the thing, that sometimes the trash won't stay. It'll it'll sometimes it'll wash through. And that's why it didn't appear to have any gas in the oil this time when he brought it. But it was running rough, and it was running rough because it's sitting with water in the bottom of the bowl. 
and that's where your main fuel jet is. And so it's going to pick that water up and that trash up first. So all I'm going to do is blow that back off. And just because this is how I've always done it, I'm just find something clean on me and make sure there's nothing left on the needle. And basically you just get it stuck back on the little tang. And then reinsert that right there. Our pin. These needles are a little harder to, to check because the end of the needle has got a spring inside of it. The older style, you could actually watch where your float stops. You'll know that you've got the float height set correctly. Right now, this one just bottoms out on the, the body below, but I can tell it starts pushing. I don't know, maybe Joni can see right in here. You see that little stand in there, Joni? It's like a little pig where the needle is kind of where my fingernails pointing mm -hmm. so when i when i bring this in if you'll watch it you'll actually see that post compress you see it in there and right there you can see the spring on it it's pushing the float back up so that right there kind of shows you where the float level is it's just about neutral Honestly, I like to see it grab a little bit quicker. And what I'm doing is this metal tang here is how you adjust your float. So if I go back in here now and uh, then that that's when it contacts now. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the body of the carburetor here. This is straight line, and basically this straight line on this float that you know. I've always set my floats up basically where when all this closes, this is all horizontal. Because what happens is like a, when it's in the carburetor sitting like this, you got your fuel going in until it rises. So, and where I have it, it'll actually lower the fuel level just a little bit in the carburetor bowl, which won't be a problem, but it also makes sure that we get plenty of uh, time to stop that fuel. All right. I just want to blow out my idle circuit. Okay, finally, before we put the carburetor back together, what I want to do is make sure this is all clean, that we don't have any obstruction in it. And so basically all I do is, it's like I can, I can turn this where I can see through it. I'm looking through the holes and then I can take, this is just a tip cleaner, like a welding tip cleaner. Or you can pull a bristle out of a wire brush and, and it'll work too. So what I'm doing is I can actually see this is clear going through. I don't know if Joni can see it or not. But Stop turning it. I just take my word for it. Which holes? Is the two holes on the side right or here. the little hole? Okay. This, all, all you're going to see is when it, when the needle comes on, on this one, it stops here. So basically the jet is from there to there on the inside, which I could see it's nice and clear. I'm sorry, it's not focusing very well. That's okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with these. All I want to do is just make sure that these are clear. And I can look at this thing. It's, it's really nice. So I, I didn't expect to see any gunk in it. And then I'll turn it around and we'll go the other direction. And just kind of make sure there's nothing in there and then we'll just blow it out with compressed air. But hold on to this thing tight because it will shoot across the room and you'll lose it. All right, so with this, your little um, turn portion, uh, the little pig, it goes down into the carburetor and you'll feel it kind of like kind of pop into place. You wanna hook your choke cable back up. Set it back on it. 
this has got a rubber gasket around it so it's not the old fiber fiber style gaskets which is good because they don't you don't tear them usually when you take it apart I'm not over tightening it. Just kind of get them all started first. Once again, this you don't have to put too much because you don't want really, really want to bend these tangs or strip out your holes. So I feel like the carburetor is going to be fine. But what we need to do now is address where the garbage came from. So I'm going to remove the fuel filter, and then we're going to blow. We're going to remove the lines, and then we're going to kind of nice and easy you, you never want to put compressed air through your, your your fuel pump which is right here but if you'll kind of blow on it nice and easy you'll get whatever's in there out but don't just hook to it and you'll you'll burst your diaphragm inside so what i need to do first is pinch off my fuel line at the tank with a pair of ice grips and then we can remove the fuel filter so i'm just going to uh, pinch the fuel line off behind the fuel filter between the fuel filter and the fuel tank this with a pair of vice grip just a straight jaw vice grips and so that's let's got that pinched off and then I can remove the fuel filter right here line from fuel pump too. I just want to see if there's anything in there. See just a little bit of trash come out but you can actually look at it and tell that it was pretty clean. I don't know. He might have replaced it but usually if they get water in it the water will stay in this fuel filter too. So I'm just going to remove the fuel line on the top side of the fuel pump too and I'm just going to let the fuel drain onto the paper the same way. I didn't see some of that garbage just came off the outside. All right, like I was saying, I'm not going to blow directly into this fuel pump because I don't want to I don't want to destroy the the diaphragm. I'm just going to blow at it and see anything coming out which is good so what I'll do is we'll blow the lines out really good we'll change the fuel filter but uh, lastly I want to look inside the tank and see if we see any garbage sitting down the bottom because it doesn't do us any good to clean the carburetor if it's still just gonna pump it right back to it all right guys so uh, be real careful whatever you use um, when you're messing around gasoline I can look in here and I can see water sitting on the bottom of the tank at first when i just visually look without the flashlight i didn't see anything but when i do this i definitely see it on the bottom and a little bit of trash not much so what i need to do is drain the tank okay guys i'm doing my best to show you if you look sort of right at the bottom there's something glim glimmering not the light from the camera but right in the middle of that circle that's water there's a, a long little stream of water at the bottom of the tank so water and gas separate and water is heavier so it sits on the bottom so that's why you always pick it up first because that's the first thing that gets to your to your fuel line all right guys what i have just a, actually a little bit too large <laughs> piece of five eighths hose I'll show you an easy way of siphoning a tank if it's like a lawnmower tank or something just make sure you're on the bottom where you want to be and just put some air in it. Don't want to put too much. But once we get it going, it's just, it'll sit there and siphon this thing out now. Because our fuel is lower than the gas tank. So 
Uh, it ought to pump it out pretty quick being that big of a hose. So we'll drain this tank and be right back. All right, we have the, um, the fuel tank clean. What I did was I drained it out. I took a rag and just kind of soaked up all the gas. And uh, I'll show you the water that I got out of it in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strain because I got about four gallons of gas out of this and we're not gonna throw that away because it's like, like gold right now. But what I'm gonna do is I transfer it to a, a clear container and then I'll pour it back in here because I can inspect it as I pour it in there because you'll see the water sit uh, immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and we'll be right back. So what we're looking for, we're looking for any kind of settling. And right now I'm not gonna see any until I get towards the bottom of the, of the gas tank. So of all that that I just siphoned out. So this is good. All right, we're gonna try to finish up. We, the, we just had a storm come through. So the shop gets a little noisy with the rain, but uh, we need to try to finish. I just wanted to show you, Johnny was also wondering how, how do I catch the water? Well, it goes straight to the bottom. So you can see, this is what I captured off the bottom of the tank after we drained it. So all the sediment. And then as I was pouring it in here, the first couple uh, pours, I didn't worry about it because I knew it was on the bottom. But as I started getting about halfway through the tank, uh, I, I just put a paint strainer in there and just strained it out. And like I said, I can get a little bit more. I said you don't want to waste this stuff. No, it's just still on the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the fuel lines put back on, and this will be a really good time to change your fuel filter. I can't really see what you're doing. Yeah, I'm just putting the fuel lines back on. It's a tight area. So we're just gonna put this thing back together like like it came apart. And then Johnny was asking, what about the water, the gas and the oil? Well, again, the gas and the oil came from getting trash under the float. It's about the only way, trash on the float or the, the fuel tank. Well, I can tell that it's breathing, so I'm not so much worried about there. I was worried about having trash in the carburetor where we found water and trash in the bowl. Not so much around the needle, but, but then again, it wasn't, uh, the mower wasn't giving those same symptoms as he called me about a couple weeks ago because when you check the oil, there's no gas in it. I think the engine running rough and stumbling, they were thinking it was back in it. So we know it got in there before. We addressed that. We addressed the, the garbage getting in there. So now we'll, uh, we're going to put it back together, run it, and see how it sounds. Tighten any of that. Just wipe the trash off this gasket. Again, you can look at his air cleaner and tell that they've serviced it. Yeah, he, he watches his stuff close. Band. I'm gonna check the oil again. And you can look at it and the oil is actually just a grunt low. Usually if you watch your mower at all, if you have gas in your oil, it's gonna read high. It'll be well over the full mark and this right here is not. So it actually could use just a little bit of oil. All right, so our oil is up now. All right, we're gonna crank it and see how it sounds. It takes a second to get the fuel there. All right. 
So hopefully that helped you guys if you have this same problem, gas and oil or just running rough, uh, this would be some things you can check and a quick and easy uh, carburetor clean. So, and as you see, I didn't have to pull the carburetor off to do it. So, anyways, uh, just try to pass on some knowledge and uh, hopefully it helps you. Appreciate you guys watching and you guys take care. Subscribe if you like. And, uh, we, we do these videos all along and a lot of Bronco videos, but uh, we try to fit in these uh, random repairs all along. But uh, thanks again. You guys take care. Bye.